This is the first video of the aggregate demand and aggregate supply uh, series. Uh, it's going to be a rather long series because there's quite a lot of concepts to cover. So this will be the first video. This is unit 2.2 of the IB macroeconomic syllabus. And in this video, I'll basically introduce the concept of aggregate demand. So what is aggregate demand? What are its components? How is it defined? And so on. Let's start. So in this video, I'm going to hopefully accomplish the following learning objectives. First of all, we're going to distinguish between the microeconomic concept of demand and the macroeconomic concept of aggregate demand. We're going to construct an aggregate demand curve. We're going to explain why this AD curve has a negative slope. And then we're going to describe the components of aggregate demand, which are consumption, investment, government spending, and net exports. So let's get on with it. So the first outcome in this series is to distinguish between the microeconomic concept of um, demand, which we've covered in microeconomics, and the macroeconomic concept of aggregate demand. In microeconomics, uh, demand is a relationship between price and quantity demanded. It is the total amount of a certain good or service that consumers are willing and able to buy at a certain price over a certain period of time. In macroeconomics, however, Aggregate demand is defined differently. Aggregate demand is the total spending on all goods and services in a period of time at a given price level. So the relationship here is not between price and quantity. It's a relationship between average price level on the y-axis and real output or real GDP on the x-axis. Aggregate demand is the total amount of spending on all goods and services in an economy in a period of time at a given average price level. So as I said, in microeconomics, we draw the demand curve as a relationship between price on the y-axis and quantity demanded on the x-axis and is a negatively sloping um, curve. So here, for example, is the demand for cars. This is the microeconomic concept of demand. The macroeconomic concept of aggregate demand, the curve looks the same, so it's still negatively sloping and we label it aggregate demand, but the relationship is between the, between the average price level and the real output or real GDP or real national income on the x-axis. So remember, the labels are very different and the concept itself is, is very different. So now we have to explain why the aggregate demand curve has a negative slope. Why is it negatively sloping? Remember, we said it is the total demand from all sectors within the economy. So the household sector, um, their demand is called consumption spending, C. The business sector, their demand is investment spending, I. The government sector, their demand is the government spending. And the foreign sector, which gives us net exports, the difference between export revenue and import spending. As the average price level in the economy falls, the level of output demanded by consumers, by firms, by the government, and by the net foreign sector increases. Obviously, as the average price level of all goods and services across the economy, as that falls... Um, consumers, firms, governments, and the foreign sector will demand more goods and services, and vice versa. In the next slide, I'm going to explain why that is the case. So what happens when the general price level falls? Well, basically, as the general price level falls, ceteris paribus, other things held constant. Remember, this is a very important assumption um, when we analyze any sort of um, demand or supply even if it's aggregate demand and aggregate supply. So as the general price level falls, ceteris paribus, which means other things held constant, the purchasing power of consumers' income and wealth will increase. Okay, uh, Consumers, we assume ceteris paribus, they have the same income. Now they can buy more because the general price level has fallen. So consumption spending will increase, investment spending will increase, and government spending will increase. The second thing, generally when the general price level falls, interest rates also fall. This encourages consumers to go out there and, and borrow more money and therefore they spend more, so consumption spending increases. Businesses can borrow money at a lower interest rate and this encourages them to invest more. And at the same time, this, the government can borrow money at lower interest rates as well and so government spending will increase. At the same time, so right now we've seen two factors that contribute to this negative relationship between the general price level and aggregate demand. 
The third thing is generally as the general price level falls, the exchange rate of your currency falls. Your currency depreciates. This makes foreigners want to purchase more of your exports, so you tend to export more. And at the same time, you tend to import less because now your currency, its value has fallen. All of these things contribute to rising aggregate demand. So remember, as the general price level falls, purchasing power of income and wealth increases, interest rates fall, and the exchange rate of your currency tends to fall. All of this encourages more spending by um, households, by businesses, by the government, and by the foreign sector. So let's have a look at each of the components of aggregate demand. The first one is consumption spending. This is the total spending by consumers or the household sector on domestic goods and services. Remember, this only includes domestic goods and services because foreign goods and services, that counts as the country's imports. Okay? Consumers spend on two types of goods. Durable goods, which are used over a period of time, used for more than one consumption cycle, usually more than one year, like TVs, cars, bicycles. And non-durable goods. So non-durable goods, they are usually used up immediately or over a short period of time, like toilet paper, rice, uh, newspapers, all of these things. So consumption spending is a total spending by the household sector on domestic goods and services. That's how we define it. The second component of aggregate demand is investment. Investment is the addition of capital stock to the economy carried out by firms. So when firms add to the capital stock of the economy, we say that they have investment. This is their investment spending, the second component of aggregate demand. There are two types of investment spending. There's replacement investment. This is when they spend on existing capital to maintain its productivity. So spending on capital to maintain um, productivity of existing capital. Induced investment is spending on capital to increase output due to an increase in demand in the economy. So replacement investment, investment basically you are investing in capital to maintain productivity of existing capital. Induced investment is when you spend on capital to increase output because there's an increase in demand in the economy. Both types together make up the investment spending by the business sector or by the firms in the economy. The third component of aggregate demand is government spending, G. So this includes spending on health, education, law and order, defense, transport, housing, and all the other things that all branches of government, federal, state, provincial, and local governments, um, spend their money on. So health, education, all of this is government spending. The amount of government spending in the economy will depend on the government's policies and objectives, and we'll talk about that later in the series. The last component of aggregate demand is net exports. Remember, that constitutes of exports minus imports. Exports, or X, these are the domestic goods and services that are bought by foreigners. So they result in an inflow of export revenue to the country. There's a typo here. It's meant to be export revenue, not expert. Export revenue. I apologize for that. I just noticed it. Uh, imports, which is the last component, these are goods and services bought from foreign producers. They result in an outflow of import expenditure. So basically, exports result in an inflow of money into the country. Imports result in an outflow. They are considered a leakage from the circular flow. So net export, X minus M, is equal to export revenues minus import expenditure. Therefore, this is a very important equation that we will use quite a lot in this course. Aggregate demand is equal to C, which is consumption spending by households, plus I, which is investment spending by businesses, plus G, which is government spending by all branches and levels of government, plus X minus M, which is net exports, the difference between the country's exports, goods and services sold to foreigners, minus imports, which are goods and services bought by domestic consumers from foreign producers. This equation is very important. AD equals C plus I plus G plus X minus M. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.